smiling in your face, really. Hello and welcome to Behind the Mic and another episode with great people. This is how we do it here and we're going to come with, I can't say no more, an artist. She's an award-winning artist, Miss Daniel Black. How is it going? Well, we're going to get to, to the point of how you got to this to this ride up here, you know, and you're looking fabulous today. Thank you. you know, I like that. I like Thank it. You. So, uh, tell the people where were you born and uh, raised that first. I was born in the Boogie Down Bronx. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, down at uh, Arthur Avenue and and uh, uh, Morris Park and Pelham Parkway, those yeah. areas. And so, um, yeah, I was born there, June seventh, and. Um, we then moved up to Yonkers, and I became a Bronkers girl because <laughs> I went to school in the Bronx, but I lived across the street, which was Yonkers. Right. So I had like the best of both worlds. That's good. That's good. So you, you know, you were Bronx was burning, you know, out here. Yeah. Um, so I love when I have another person that can relate. Like I was like I was born in the Bronx, and it's not the way it is now. The only yeah. thing I can say that I love that is now is the technology and the buildings and stuff like that. But the way the people are, I liked it back in the 80s, you know? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the way family was connected. Right. So. This is a stomping ground for yes. many people. Yes, yes. Yeah. They came here to build. Mm. And were your family from here or they came from another state? And no, so my father um, is 100% Italian. My mom's 100% mm. Puerto Rican, so. Mm. I have another right. best of both worlds. <laughs> and um, my mother was actually born in Oklahoma. Mm. Um, my grandfather at the time was stationed there in the Army. So um, then they came here and stopped in the Bronx. And then that's when they started building. Um, they moved to Pelham. He had a hardware store. They built a life over there. Um, and my mother and father met, um, I believe, in college. So um, yeah. And then um, they were together. and. Got married and here I am. <laughs> and how many uh, kids, do you, uh, siblings do you have? I was gonna say kids. So I'm one of three. So <laughs> okay. I am the oldest. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. they got two others to look up to you. You know. I hope uh. so. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, hey, you know, which is good. Um, and it's kind of, you know, people like Italian and Spanish. It's not that far apart. You know. No, they're like, not. But at mm. that time, you know, um, even so, you know the. The hardships of my father and my mother actually being together because oh, even though they were so similar, mm -hmm. but you know the Italian you know side of the family wanted him to stay with the Italian yes, side of yes. the family and not really you know transition over to something else. So, mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, it was a great mix. Yeah, they, uh, a lot of people don't realize how they say prejudice was towards blacks and everything. It no. was towards each other too because. Italian, especially in Little Italy, in the Bronx, right? you know, and then there was another little tiny Italy next to Canal Street where they couldn't even cross to Canal Street back in those days. I know. I've you heard wasn't so allowed. many stories, yes. Yeah, because yeah. I hanged out with the Chinese guys in that area, and we was not allowed to go to certain blocks. Right. You had to keep your distance, and so people don't know how it is, and then if you're in love, you're in love. Like, they don't really care, but oh, yeah. it's, it's hard to, like, you know what, mind your business, and and then you had the family to fight with, so. Right, yeah, exactly. And so I think that was very hard for my mother. Um, but you know, even love is such a strong word because you can love somebody no matter what they are, but you know who they are. And mm -hmm. so then, you know, you try to control who they are to you. Mm -hmm. And you know, you may be Puerto Rican or you may be Italian, but um, you are who I say you are. And mm. so, you know, yeah, that's my mom, how my mom was like, was. They, she don't see no race. She was like, if you marry someone, they're not Italian, they're not Chinese, they're not nothing. They're your wife, your husband. Right. That, you know, right. So that's how right. I was brought up. Right. Mm, so. Right. Which was good. Um, but how was it growing up with, you know, with you being having two different parents and 
It was yeah. hard because we were more to be raised as Italian mm -hmm. than we were to be um, have any roots um, on the Puerto Rican side. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that I was the one who was the rebel and always wanted to know more about mm -hmm. the other side. And I think that that really came about more when I s would dive more into music. And, you know, when Selena came out in the movie yeah. and everything, that was like, oh, Spanish music. And, mm -hmm. you know, she was crossing over into English and the whole, like, you know, duo thing of her being in music in English and Spanish. And so I was just like, that's really what kind yeah. of started to bring me more into my roots. And, you know, um, of course the food was always there. <laughs> the, you know? Hey, <laughs> listen, Italians have some good food oh, too. Oh, <laughs> both sides are, I mean, mm. you can't go wrong either mm. way. You really, you really can't. So that for me was very interesting and constantly, you know, just having to, um, stand up for myself and say, well, I'm not this nor that, yeah. but I am all, you know, first and foremost, I'm American. That's how I see it. I'm like, you know, born and raised in other places. Like I was born, um, born from both Spanish things, but I never was brought up like that. Right. I was country music, rock, Chinese people coming to my house, like, what's, <laughs> going, what's going on here? You're, you live yeah. in the South Bronx with Asians and you're listening to country. Yeah. Something's going on wrong. And, yeah, you know, so. yeah. I was the one to kind of break all of those chains by bringing diversity um, into my house. It wasn't easy. Um, I got yelled at a lot. I constantly was just always some sort of control of what, wh what it's supposed to be when I honestly don't think anything is really normal at all. I just think you know, whatever it is, it is mm -hmm. at that time. Um, I'm just a lover. Like, I just want to be around everybody. Yeah. I want to know everything, mm -hmm. you know? So always constantly being told, oh, you can't invite this one or you can't invite that one right. or, you know, like, why not? And then I'd do it anyways. And then that caused more you know, or... drama and trouble. And I was always <laughs> considered like the rebel and troublemaker, but it's really is just trying to prove like that there's nothing wrong with it. Show right. me what's wrong with it, and I will deny it. I think that's being the uh, elder of the, the siblings, because my brother was like that. He was the first one to want to try everything. Mm -hmm. And me, the, being the last boy, I was like, okay, he made that mistake. I ain't doing it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm just so, going to follow the rules. Yeah, I'm just going to follow wanna, whatever. Yeah, you know, whatever yeah. got him in trouble, I'm going to do opposite. Right. So, you know, you didn't have that person to follow, so you were, you know, the I first born, the, the rebel. I was the only one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, growing up, because I know... As an Italian dad and a Latin dad, they they stubborn in their ways. Mm -hmm. And then as a, a Latin um, female back in the days, they were more um, whatever their husband wants to do, they'll do. You know, so they'll tell you, no, it's wrong. Your dad don't like it, blah, blah, blah. How did you go around that, you know, to get to a point to see where you're at, where, who you are? I think just by trial and error. Um, I think just doing what I think or know is right um, in my heart, um, you know, got me always to where I wanted to. And sometimes it didn't only mm -hmm. because maybe I made some mistakes along the way. But I think the only thing I could really say is honestly just my soul just saying no it's wrong it's not mm -hmm. right to think that way because you have to understand as you're learning and as you're growing and people are throwing all these conditions on top of you they're trying to brainwash you and they're trying to create you mm -hmm. the you that they want you to be but and you're at the same time trying to create yourself so you're trying to fight that mm -hmm. while trying to fight the hardships of growing within yourself so it's like a, a double war. It's like you have two swords in your hand and you're just like trying to, you know, just Move beat back. everything around you. And it's yeah. really it, hard. I see I see a lot of, even to this day, I see a lot of parents like, and I, I post up many times, let your kids be your kids, stop living through them, because I see it a lot, um, especially now. You know, before it was just, no, this is not our culture. This is not our ways. Now it's, hey, this is what I wanted to do when I'm young. You know, right, so it's right. similar, but, you know, it's just a change of uh, yeah, diversity I, type of thing. I think that tradition and culture is so important to know where you came from, why things have been or how and why things were done at that certain time and kind of just 
agree to disagree that that is how it worked then. And although mm -hmm. it might have worked then for whatever reason, sure. eventually things evolved and things are just not going to work anymore. It's time to change. And if you're not okay with change, which we all know stubborn Italians and people yeah. of that generation mm -hmm. are not, I mean, I'm in a crossover generation, so I'm used to things kind of staying the same, but then I'm used to things very happening very fast. Mm. And so, you know, you kind of get caught. Yeah, because you have the worst of both. The Italians <laughs> and the Latins are so stubborn. Oh, and it's very like, strong. Mm -hmm. Very Especially, strong. Especially, like I said, that's why I was like, the males are real stubborn, the Latins and, and Italian males. They always say they're stuck in their own ways. Yeah. Especially, you know, ones that were born in the 20s and the 30s. They are like... This is the way it is. This is it's the way we always been. It's never going to be anywhere else. <laughs> nope. They don't want to change nothing. No. Uh, my dad was the same way. He was like, no, this is the way a kid's supposed to be. And this, I'm like, but we're changing. Nope. This is the generation. This Everyone is, uh, is different within their own. Yeah. You know. So how, how did that come about? You know, you were going to school, first in the Bronx, and then you changed to Yonkers. Totally different. Oh, yeah. How well, I continued going to school in the Bronx, but it was, you know, people of around that area mm. so it kind of you know got both sides um i mean there was no, there's really nothing to mm. to speak on it it was just um it was diverse and i honestly really appreciate that especially being in a full-blown catholic school mm. um you know we had everything irish black um chinese um you know white i mean we were so. all over the place albanian i mean we it was just, I mean, because you're getting everybody from that area. From that area. Yeah. So the, the school was more diverse than the uh, area, you know. That, than my home. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> you know, because like I said, it, it's uh, anyone that was um, raised in the Bronx and, and gone to Little Italy and stuff like that. Like, I went many times, but you get that look. Like, what are you doing here? Yeah. You know, hey, bye's on. Grab your food and go. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you yes. know, so yes. it, it was like that when we were young. The only good thing I liked about it is they never was nasty. They never was like, you know, but they'll give you that look, you know, and then you'll be like, well, I've seen too many mafia movies. I'm out, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm gone. And it's, and it's just the, the funny thing about living, you know, in the Bronx. It's so diverse mm -hmm. and stuff. But um, when did you start learning that? hey, I'm starting to love music and performing. When was this start? There wasn't really initially a start. I, I just always loved mm. music. I mean, it just made me move, made me think, made me go into another world. Um, when I, I knew that I definitely wanted to be an artist, I was in kindergarten and I was, teacher had asked me to go get something from the office and so I was in the staircase and I'm going up and I, here's these there was a high school nearby and these kids are outside in their car and they're blasting music and i think it was mariah carey fantasy or something <laughs> I, I it had to have been something mariah carey is all i remember and i was just looking out the window and i was like jamming to the song or saying because i knew it and yeah. i was just like that's what i want to be that's what i want to do i just want to be doing something with music i want to sing i want to be on stage i want to be seen i want to be heard mm -hmm. um and that was it. And any time they played music in the classroom, I just automatically yeah. stood up. There was even if the teacher said stay in your seat, like I just had to get up. It was I had to move. <laughs> you know, it's not something you just sit there yeah. and listen. It's you know, it's it, a group. It's, it's in, it was in the blood, so yeah. it's like to go. So, you know, when your parents learn of this, because I again the stubbornness is coming in, um, uh, and then they see you dancing to not not opera, not Italian, <laughs> not um salsa, nothing like that. How did they react like towards when they see you doing, you know, well, when you were you younger? Well, you know what, my household, when it came to music, it wasn't um, a, a big thing. We listened mm -hmm. to everything. Okay. I mean, my parents would take us to um, Tower Records when they oh, were yeah. about, oh, I mean, we would walk in there <laughs> and I would just be going through all the CDs and like, <laughs> picking the ones that I think, you know, like all the new stuff. And I mean, they allowed me to listen to Salt and Pepper, um, oh, okay, Brandy. Okay. I mean, I wasn't um, 
that conditioned to be like, no, you can't listen to this. Mm. I mean, we, they, my parents listened to Motown. I mean, mm. we would just groove. Music was a big thing in our household. I think that when it was more than I was getting into the Spanish music, that it was, was like it. playing, you know, hour after hour after hour. It was like, all right, like enough now. Enough. And, you know, <laughs> kind of like then it became worrisome. Like, well, where is she going to go with this? And how far mm. is she going to go? And, you know, hey, is she going to start dating Spanish men? She gets a little older or mm. you know like when you're younger it's like funny and it's cool and you're into it but it's like when you get older it's like okay now we gotta, no. we gotta watch this one <laughs> yeah especially you know again back to the male especially you know the daughter they, they're a little more overprotected they're like hey what are you gonna who are you bringing here you know yeah There's, and i'm very vibrant and outgoing and i think i was the one that kind of needed to be more watched over mm -hmm. to say she'll literally talk to anybody so well, <laughs> let's keep a little leash on this one <laughs> and so your, your your siblings they were more uh did the same thing that you used to do like music wise or they just like um m my my siblings were into music my sister mm -hmm. was very much into music uh, my sister was actually in a choir um mm -hmm. when she was younger in um, my high school and um, I, I didn't get start getting into music, um, like going after the pursuit mm. of it and the, and the dream of it and the act of it um, until I was older. I mean, mm. I was always into dance, in dance or cheerleading, sports mm. and stuff like that, um, did plays, but um, never actually went after music until I was, you know, my 20s. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah it seems like uh, all those things prepared you for you know, music performing, you know. Yeah, I mean, really the struggles of growing up, my parents got divorced at a young age, like mm -hmm. nine, 10 years old. And so I had to grow up kind of quickly. I am the oldest, so that kind of just like falls on my shoulders a little bit more than, you know, it would for my other siblings, just because I'm, I'm next. And, you know, so it just, it's, it's an automatic. Mm -hmm. um, when I realized that so much time has gone by it was like no this is what i want to do and like you know i grew up by myself so no one was ever home my parents were divorced we ended up mm -hmm. living with my father you know it was different than any other divorced mm -hmm. parents that were around me or that i knew everyone was lived with their mother their mother had oh, custody yeah. of them they would visit their father and mine was the complete opposite, the opposite. Mm -hmm. so i didn't really have that um empathy and compassion and support at home it was like came home you did your homework took a shower and you were in your own bubble and everybody mm. had their own tvs everybody had their own desk in their room so everyone was kind of separate okay. so there's no interaction so i think the struggle of being alone and kind of forcing myself to get into something that i love um that's really what prepared me because i just stopped in my tracks and said no i want this mm. how do i do it though that yeah. was the bigger struggle of trying to, to get fix. some motion, some traction into that road yeah, that I was. And, and it's probably probably diving. hard because you're the only one that wanted to go to that road, and everyone else is like doing their own thing on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. I wrote letters to my mother. I asked so many people, "How do mm. I do this?" When I was younger, but everybody was more focused on: Are they safe? Are they fed? Are they good? Are they doing okay in school? Mm -hmm. um, versus actually listening to what we were saying or what we wanted or what we were like kind of after or our aspirations and dreams was kind of just like, no, go to school, get good grades, you know, yeah. daddy will take care of everything and mm -hmm. just pick a college you want to go to and, you know, just, That's just it. do that. Yeah, it, it, it happens uh, more with divorce. Um, they don't want to listen or sometimes they over listen. Like, I want this and they get you everything like, no, I materialistic want, I, yeah I, I wanted to get it myself oh no 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 don't worry you know right. sometimes it's the opposite uh, right either, I, either way it's still wrong yeah <laughs> you know? I remember um, being in Costco and it was when I first started to like figure out how I was gonna record my first song mm -hmm. um, and you know a friend of mine was telling me how much it would cost where I should go and all of that and I, all I wanted for Christmas was like just cash so mm -hmm. I can Get spend it the way I needed and wanted to spend it and my father wanted to buy us old TVs and I was just like do not 
give me a TV. <laughs> I have a TV. I don't want a bigger TV. I don't need an electronic. If I see this underneath the Christmas tree, I'm returning it. <laughs> and I literally said that he's like, oh, stop, blah, 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 blah. I was like, just give me the cash. Just give me the cash. And I really wasn't vocal about the things that I was doing or wanted to do because like I said I was always by myself so everything was always just inside right. my head it wasn't really a conversation so I just didn't say anything and he got his old TVs oh my and God. I was like <laughs> and I'm going to the Just store <laughs> and I returned it and he was so mad and I was like I told you this isn't what I need and it's mm. not what I want and I, I really want to finish paying and put together a song I'm creating and that meant the world to me. It wasn't a materialistic object. I didn't need a bigger TV. I already had a TV and mm -hmm. I just was never that type of person. So to be saying what you need and want and to still be given what the opposite, opposite. person needs to wants to give you and thinks yeah. that you need or want to Let's say I did that. Look, I put that bigger <laughs> TV on the mm -hmm. on the wall versus I can come into the room and say, guys, I created my own song. Like, I did it, and I paid for it, and, you know, I invested in myself. That, to me, meant more. Yeah, especially, you know, especially when they ask you, what do you want? And you tell them, and they still get you something that you didn't want or didn't right. need. Right, right. It happens a lot. It's like, when I was younger, they was like, what you want for Christmas? Whatever you're going to get me. Because it doesn't matter what I want, <laughs> they're still going to get me something. Exactly, you know? right? You it learn was, after that. Yeah, it wasn't too like I was... 14 to 15 that they got, actually got something that I wanted, you know, right. it's like, I was right. like, okay, because when first uh, Nintendo first came out, that was when they was like, oh, I want this Nintendo box, what's that, it's a new box that's coming out, I know I'm not going to get it, but I just thought I'd tell you, and, Nintendo you know, bringing it back. yeah, and then that's when the first time ever I got something that I actually had on my list. You oh, know? wow. Well, yeah. congratulations. Yeah, that. I was like, oh, whippy, you know. But uh, we're going to take a short commercial break, and then we're going to hit um, more about your music and when you actually started doing your music. All right? Mm -hmm. Hey, this is Behind the Mic, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. This is Behind the Mic. And again, we're speaking to Danielle Black. And we're uh, actually finding out so much stuff about her. So we're going to dive a little bit more in towards her teenage years and when she started music. So, um, you know, before commercial break, you said that, you know, you finally got your first uh, equipment and everything. Do you remember, what, like, what equipment did you get? Just a box and a, and a microphone or... No, actually, I didn't um, dive into any of that until later on. Oh, um, okay. It was actually COVID that brought me that... to get my whole own studio set up. Oh, wow. Um, so when I was younger, I just, I just literally signed up to any studio that I could mm. get my hands on. Um, and honestly, prayed my ass off and just like was like, God, like put something in my path. Like... Mm. How do I do this? How do I do that? I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no one to talk to because no one does music in my family. Mm. No one, you know, I didn't have any of that musical influence um, around me other than, you know, going to Tower Records and buying right. music and listening to all that. And, um, or having my aunts teach me how to dance to Spanish music <laughs> and all of that. And that was like my favorite thing to do. Um, and so I just started recording and, and um, you know, meeting one person after the other, connecting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, having friends connect me with other people and stuff like that. And so how I dived really deep into it and started really recording and building um, Danielle Black, who wasn't Danielle Black mm -hmm. at first. Right. Um, I was working and my girlfriend calls me and she's like, I met this producer guy, engineer, oh. and... Um, I hope you don't mind, but I gave him your number, and he's <laughs> looking for a female artist, and, you know, he seems pretty cool, and so I was like, what? I was like, all right, awesome, and I was so nervous because I was like, 
you know, be careful what you ask for mm -hmm. because it's like actually happening. And so um, that was my first look of manifestation. Oh, um, that was my first realization that, hey, if you put it out in the universe and you ask for it and you pray about it and you kind of make the steps and the, the things, you know, you're walking towards those things that you're asking for and kind of making the moves and the connections, it eventually is going to fall in, in place. In place. Mm -hmm. So um, we did connect. Um, and from there, I would spend almost every weekend driving up. Wow. He um, opened his home to me, him and his wife. They had a large studio downstairs, and I would stay there. And, you know, when my family and my father actually realize, like, mm. what I'm doing and where I'm going and, like, nervous as mm. hell, like, you're not coming home, you know, no. you're going to stay there. Who are these people? And, da -da -da -da. <laughs> and like, I'm aware and I know that they're right. angelic people and, you know, and all of that. And, um, you know, it was hard because I was always caught in the middle, you know, and right. the oldest and, you know, he wanted me to be home and, you know, what are you doing and is it safe? And I don't know anything about it. I don't know about oh that world. So I'm nervous. So, you know, I, but I just kept going sure. with it. And what was the, uh, like, to bring you towards hip hop and everything? Because a, a female in the hip hop world um, in the 80s and 90s wasn't so big. Maybe like the biggest name that probably came out was uh, Queen Latifah, Salt and Pepper. You know, it, a handful of uh, females. What would make you wanted to go in, in that, like, and not like salsa or, or Italian music? No, or? I honestly, there was there's a few things that made me go into hip hop. One, I went to culinary school. Mm -hmm. I was told a million times I would never do anything with it. I would never make anything of myself. This is a waste of time. Um, da 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 da. But I think just for me being so out there uh, and creative that I think anything that I went for I was gonna be told the same thing so it didn't matter so when I went to culinary school um, I thought I was gonna open a bakery and do things with that and make cakes but like I said I had this fire in me for music and so um, although I created my own ballad Remember them? School, yes, uh, to okay. old school hmm. hip hop beats. And as I started creating that, I said, oh, maybe I should like rap and rhyme about my own music, mm. about my own life, and, and you know, create original music. I love hip hop. I love the rhyming. I love the flow. I love the beats. Um, yeah, every other white girl's probably singing their song and their heart out and right. whatever, but you know, I wanted to go and be different. I wanted mm. to do both because I can never just be one or the other. Right. I have to be in the middle. I have mm. to explore everything. So um, another artist that was recording in the same studio with me ca called me up one day and I'm in the store and he said to me, you know, Danielle, um, you're not a rapper. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be doing this. The stereotype, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about that. You shouldn't be doing this. Um, and what the funny thing is that he was black. Right. And so I'm like, we have so many songs together. And like, <laughs> like this is so unsupportive. And mm -hmm. like anyone who's beginning to venture out and doing something that they love and don't really know how to do it or what they're doing, it's mm -hmm. honestly everything's a learning curve from the very beginning and ever so. So... I didn't really know how to rap or how to be a rapper or mm -hmm. the, you know, confidence of being it. I evolved into it. And mm -hmm. so I think he was just criticizing me and just judging me off of my beginning. Right. And which is fine and, and dandy, but stay in your own lane and mind your own business and let me just do what I'm doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, um, I think that he thought that, like, I just wanted to be like a chef rapper or you know like like i like that i was i was just gonna drop albums of just, ra just rhyming about, about cooking but it was like no and like you know i want to evolve and it was funny because we were together with a bunch of people and um some kid he like saw some sort of light in me and he was like mm. so are you gonna write the verse to one of the verses to his song like you know let her let her write a verse like don't just let her do the hook let her write the verse i know she has something i know she has something and he was so against okay. it and i was just like okay well noted 
But um, that's how I got into rapping and rhyming. I think it was more not just the, the rhyming of the, the recipes, which is a brand and a company that I created. It's called Musical Chefy. Mm. Um, and um, it was more so that I didn't like to be told I couldn't do, do it. it. So I had to prove to myself and others, no, I can do it. I think that's uh, that word, you can't do it. You can go either way. Like some people are like, okay. But then stubborn people will be like, oh, wait, I was going to quit. But since you told me I can't do it, now I'm going to wind up doing it. There was many projects that I know <laughs> I did not like. But since you didn't like me doing it, I'm going to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I quit on my own time. <laughs> And I, I, that's why I was saying, like, I, I'm a, a master of many things, you know, uh, because, uh, let me say, a jack of all trades, but a master of none. Because so many things, I, was, I, I tried it, and I'm like, I don't like it. But then someone said, oh, you can't do this. Oh, what? Now I'm going to do it. as Do it as way better than you, and then I'm going to quit. <laughs> right. I think the most important thing is prove that you can do it 100%, right. 110%, and then put it down and walk away. Yeah. I, I would say, if you don't try at least to do it, then, you know, they didn't fail. You, you fail basically yourself. And I don't care how many people tell you, don't do it or you can't do it. Just do whatever you can do. And listen, I tried my best. Now I know I can't do it because I tried, not because you told me I can't. Exactly. So, which is good. Um, that guy didn't even know he was pushing you into being great and what you do now. So. My biggest inspiration is um, negativity um, or just uh, a non-believer. Oh, yeah. You know, because it wasn't that I was trying to do something that um, I couldn't do. I was trying to do something that I felt inside of me that I should do because it's something that I stumbled upon. I never in my right mind ever said, I want to rap music or I want to mm -hmm. be a rapper. I just always saw myself as an artist and being on stage mm -hmm. and singing my own songs. And it was always just like pop music or something that I envisioned in my head. Right. Now I never thought that I, I was gonna be on stage going Vogue around <laughs> on the Trap Madonna. I know, or, right? You know, or y'all <laughs> thought I was finished. Yeah. I, you know, never in my right mind thought that I was going to ever rap my own music. Yeah, which which great music. Uh, but, you know, again, you're gonna, you have probably two things going uh, negative for you. You know, they see you as white. They don't see you as mixed. Mm -hmm. And a female in a male dominant um, yes. genre, which is yes. hip hop. Yes. How did, you know, because I know you probably had a couple people that didn't want to work with you or didn't, you know. So no. how did you push on? Like, there, I never found somebody that didn't want to work with me. Oh, that's Everyone good. Everyone was that's good. always so um, embraced me. Mm -hmm. Everyone was very much accepted, uh, acceptive of me. Um, there were those people that kind of just like gave me the side eye. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck is this girl? Yeah. You know, um, or what is she doing or whatever. Um, and it's funny because when they see me off stage, I'm just this, you know, woman here who's in hip hop and, you know, and then when I get on stage, they're like, holy shit, I didn't <laughs> think that was going to come out of her. That see, was crazy. It, it happened. Uh on, in the music awards, I'm looking at everybody's face, and when you're about to sing, everybody's like, who's, like, what is she doing? And then all of a sudden, everybody's up like, oh! Yeah, it's, <laughs> you know? uh, it's almost like the judgment right before they can actually truly make yeah. the judgment. It's like, you know, um, don't judge a book by its cover, mm. you know, until you open it and you start reading it, and it's kind of like that's where I open up right on stage for you to see, for you to know, for you to find out, for you to, to educate you on mm who I am and what I do, um, you know. Which I, it, I think that's a good thing. Like when you look at someone on the stage, we're like, oh, here you go, they're gonna, they're gonna be no good. And then they real good versus, oh, this person looks like they real good and then they not. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I prefer thinking someone's no good and then hype me up oh, than yes. me being hype and then you just bringing me down. Yes, you know? yes. So. It's, it's definitely validation and just, again, getting on stage and proving that I can. Wow. So now, teenager years, uh, uh, I say pre-adult 20s, you know, the 25, you're starting to record um, songs more and more. Uh, what was your first uh, song that you made? And how, how did you feel like when people started listening to it and stuff? Oh my God, I did a cover song, Fever. Mm -hmm. 
and I played it, and my girlfriend was like, give me that CD, and she put it in, and she was like, to everyone listen, <laughs> we're going to play Danielle's song, and like, literally, like, she played it, and everyone looked at me and was like, that's you, mm. and I was just like, like, I didn't know, like, what to say or how to feel. I was like, do you like it? And, like, her brother just turned to me and was, and was like, I want to marry you. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so this is good. good. This is good. <laughs> it's, uh, sometimes it's like, you don't, especially when it's friends, real friends, because real friends will tell you if it's no good or not versus the yes people, you know. Yes, so, yes. And that's, I'm more scared of the real friends than anything, you know. Right, yeah. right. I think, you know, just through it all, you just kind of have to play it out and kind of learn who's, who, what place everyone, what part everyone plays and what place they're in. And some of those are going to change. And, you know, it's unfortunate because a lot of them I'm not friends with anymore. Right. But they played such a significant part. And, like, when it was real, it was real. Mm -hmm. And the support was really there. And then... You know, it's one thing when you're first starting. Everyone was all about it. You know, yeah. your, your close friends and family and everybody. And it's so alive and so present and so mm. there. But then when you come out with your second album and your third album mm -hmm. and you're going through the process, it's like people start to be like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Because I, they I, don't, they're not about the journey. Yeah, I don't know if it's about the journey. I think sometimes it's the people that, yay. Oh, wait, she's making it. I didn't think she was going to make it. You know? I didn't think she was going to continue. Yeah, like, and that's why everybody's like, oh, man, everybody was for me in the first year. I'm like, yeah, because they thought you wasn't going to make it. They was like, let me push her, you know, help her out. and Support her. Because it's the same thing with our business when we first started. We had a lot of people want to do this, and then all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, this guy's not playing. Right. You know, and then you start getting the haters coming in, you know, so. Um, and the naysayers and people just kind of trying to, you know, hold you back or, or make you think, like, mm. just give it up already. Yeah, I'm like, the more that people tell me to give it up, I'm like, okay, cool. And you see me That's out there doing the more and more and more. Because, yeah. um, like, this platform, it was just a mindset thing. Like, who would think a uh, kid from the Bronx wanted to be a, a, a FBI agent, winds up to be a criminal analyst to a host? Like, the whole journey is crazy. And like you said, you know, you didn't want to do this. And then all of a sudden, it's just like, okay. You went from baking to, to singing and rapping, and yeah. so it keeps going. Now, how did your parents take it when you told them, I'm going to be a rapper? And they probably were like, what, Macy's? Like, rapping gifts? Like, what? What's you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Which I absolutely love to do. <laughs> yeah. um, it wasn't necessarily that I said, this is what I want to be. Right. I just kept creating, mm, um, okay. and I kept just kept doing it and you know the more and more they sa kept saying well you need to get a job and you need to do this mm. and you need to do that I mean I've always had a job since the time I was 16 right um, I'm like well of course you need a job mm. to pay bills and you know to do whatever but I also have the luxury of living at home and I don't have anyone telling me that I have to move out or mm. have to do this or have to do that and you know, whatever. So I'm going to utilize this advantage that most of my friends or family members Could don't it. have. And um, in a good way, by pursuing my dreams and going for things that I believe in. Um, but I think, because I had opened up a baking business. Right. And so because I was doing that, I was kind of doing music and building that on the side because I wasn't out for everyone to hear and to know. Right, right. When I first started so I was doing that underground and developing so I had a baking business and I had a chance to get into supermarkets and you know wow. I mean you know a, a lot and I was selling a lot I was all over in New York State mm -hmm. um, from and even in Connecticut and um, when I had to make a decision that hey it's either or right now. You can right. bake and you can do this later on. If you mm. don't go for music now, you're one, going to regret it. And two, um, you don't really have the funds or the needs to be able to get this half a million dollar project going, going. because my product was so good that no one would sign a confidentiality agreement mm. for my um, recipe. Mm. 
Ah, okay. You know, they made the same product as me. I wanted a, them to co-pack it, and um, they just didn't, they wouldn't go for it. So I knew my product was that good, but it wasn't the right time. And it was right. hard to let that go because it made me feel as though everyone's going to look at me like I'm a failure or mm. that I failed or that I'm confused and I don't know what I want to do and I'm choosing music over that. Mm. But all I knew, as hard as it was, that I had to let that go because it, the time was now for ah. music. And it's, it's hard, especially when you have a business, um, again, coming from Latin and Italian family, they like, no, business first, uh, profession, like, you know, because when a Latin or uh, Italian person says get a job, they don't mean get a corner store job. They mean a profession, you know? So that's Pick why. Pick a career, start right. it, clock in, mm -hmm. clock out, get married, have yep. children, and <laughs> move on. Yeah, that's their goal. <laughs> Just is do what everyone else is doing. I'm the norm. The to them. less traveled. Right. To them, it's the norm. Uh, you're supposed to be having this by now. And I heard it many times. It's like, when am I going to get a grandkid? I'm like, um, I'm still in college. Yeah, I know. I'm like, okay, you know, like, so that's their norm yeah. versus our norm, um, which is good. But uh, then that's a big leap, though, if you think about it from a secure, well, business is never secure, but at that moment it was secure. To yeah, go I mean, to... I was making some money, but the thing is, is that, you know, to really make that big bank, I had to um, find a way to have my own place. Right. And I did, and I put all the pieces to the puzzle and built the plan and got a lot of people involved. Um, but my family wasn't going to go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, my father wasn't going to put the house up, you know, <laughs> on paper and say, hey, if her house, if her yeah. business fails, you know, you could have my house. Like, yeah. that wasn't going to happen. So the opportunity was there, but when you're the only person that really knows and believes in you, um, I mean, they always say in school, never use your own money to build a business, but right. I actually think the opposite. I think use whatever you can, can, whatever you have in your hand to get to where you need to get to next. Mm -hmm. Not thinking about 10 years from now, next. Whatever you have now to get to the next step is what you focus on. I think that was the old phrase a lot of people used to use. Don't use your own money to open up your business. But then I realized when you open up your own business and do that, people with money come in and help you even more. Correct. It was like when they, they say did, you invested, you invested they your to. time and your money, and this is going up. Versus, let me give you your, your own money, and you'll probably be lazy and don't even pick up the business. Right. So you know, before yeah, because people were wanting so much business, but now I, I think you need to put your own time and effort into yeah. anything. Yeah. You know, music, business, whatever you do, it has to be your time, your effort, and your love. Yeah. You know. Or not 100%. down the drain. Yeah. 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 So now you're recording. Uh, you made your first one. When was the first? Because a lot of people were back in the days were scared to put it on YouTube and stuff. When did you start saying, you know what, I'm going to do a YouTube thing or, you know, social media or something like that? So the person that my girlfriend had connected to me with that mm. I spent a lot of time, I mean, we worked together maybe three or four years and I had to call it quits mm -hmm. because there were some issues and and I really wanted to evolve and I really wanted to be pushed more and I felt that there was a little bit more fear on their side than there was of mine I have enough fear enough right. you know uh, criticism that I give to myself so I didn't really I had to end that and say you know what I need to position myself in a new place I winded up going and landing in White Plains and going to Uni Music Studio and started working with an engineer there. Um, he goes by the name of Guap. And he is the one that I said, this is what I need. I have all this material, all these beats. I want to rebrand myself, recreate myself. I've done all this work and I'm ready and I want, I want to put stuff out, but I don't know how to do it. How do I do it? So he literally walked with me the whole way through, guided me. Some studio sessions, there were four hours of just planning and talking and organizing oh, wow. and putting it together, and then it was two hours of recording. Mm -hmm. So my booked, I booked sessions on building and creating. Mm -hmm. And that's how I worked for a while, one year straight, and then I released. And I went into, I, it was just predominantly hip hop, a little bit of singing. And um, yeah, that's, that's wow. I, I just said, I'm just gonna 
go for it. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how to do it. Leap of but faith. I did have help mm -hmm. and, and the guidance and someone that I trusted to kind of just like walk me through it and, and get through. And I think the most important thing about anything that you do in life or opening a business is to have a mentor. Mm. Yeah, it, it happens when, if you don't, like you said, you didn't know where you were going. If you would have kept on going blind, obviously you're going to hit the wall, you know, right, eventually. Right. Um, but, you know, let's go back to your siblings. Like, when they see you doing all this, they didn't want to say, like, hey, maybe I can be a, a singer or something like that. Or, or did they just say, I'm going to be just supporting you, but I'm going to be a, an artist or something, yeah. you know? My brother was more um, in tune with it. He was more like, this is dope. Mm -hmm. Or I love this song or, you know, because a lot of things that I wrote about in my first album were things that they could relate to, re relate to you right. know, things that we went through, divorce and, you know, the feeling and the emotional struggle and battle of, you know, trying to be who, who you are and who you want to be. Um, I'm the one who more so broke out of that mold, those, mm. you know, old school ways of, of thinking. But um, my brother was really about it because um, he was a big, huge hip hop. Uh, fan. My sister was cool with it, you know, but she didn't really connect to it as much as right. my brother. Um, there was support there, but I have always wanted and, and always searched for the more of the emotional support because it's the journey, it's, it's what the struggles that an artist or someone who's becoming that goes through um, yeah. along the way. Because people are like, oh, you know, they don't understand how hard it is to do what we do. That yeah. I spend sleepless nights just thinking about how to put a music video together or what am I going to wear and how is it going to look and how, you know, where am I going to get the money to, to do all these things? And, you know, because it's not only you're hearing it, but you want people to see, see it. it. So there's just all across the board. And um, it eventually becomes something that they're jealous of mm. and that they're envious of because you're doing everything you can regardless of how hard it is how down you are the struggles you don't have the money you you know but you, but at the end of the day you're still so, getting it done that turns people off yeah, they're it, like how the hell does she look so good how the hell did it, she do that no. she couldn't even afford food yesterday and here she goes no, with a music that. video and <laughs> How the hell did that happen? And it's like, well, I sacrificed because I didn't eat yesterday or I didn't go on vacation mm. or, you know, I didn't save to buy that nice car or a nice, you know, well, Louis TV. Vuitton bag or, <laughs> you know, TV Jeez. that I got for Christmas. Mm. You know, I said I just wanted to cash for Christmas and cash mm. for birthday. And I don't want gifts and I don't want that. And the sacrifice, sacrifice and not getting married and not having kids and, you know, not being fully committed to anyone else other than myself. Um, People are turned off by that. Yeah, it, it could happen like a lot. Um, they'll call you bougie because I, I heard that many times. Oh, he's bougie now, huh? And I'm like, why? Because I don't want to hang with you guys. I, it's like I got things to do. Because you don't you have know? time. Yeah. Even when I was uh, young, um, I worked from school, go to work, go to martial arts class, and rotate. And then when I started fighting, I would start traveling. Um, and people didn't understand that. Oh, you don't got time for us. You're a little bougie. Uh, but in the beginning, when they when they see me practicing outside, it was all good. And you know, dandy. Oh yeah. yeah. Look at look at he he knows how to kick high now. Oh yeah. People yeah. think it. You know, these types of things just happen overnight, and and they don't. Because um, it's kind of like you see them now, you don't, or you don't see them and now, you see them, and you're like, wait, right. what? You know, and I, that's why I say the transition, it becomes, it's so supportive in the beginning and it's yeah. so like, wow, cool, this is awesome. You know, and people think like, oh, you put in a first album, like if it doesn't, if it, that one doesn't make it, you're not going to make it. And the second one, and it's funny because when I put out my first album, six months later, I released another one and then I was on the radio. Mm -hmm. And so that, I, the faces people would make would oh. be like, wait a minute you're on the radio like and they do this like thing mm -hmm. like like, yeah, like you're uh, on the radio like you know whereas before it's like oh i hope you make it and i hope you're on the radio oh, yeah. da, da, da. then as soon and as you like, make yeah. it it's like... and then it's like wait a minute like in my right mind i really didn't think that it was that good but mm. i guess that, you who know, she paid you know right. you can pay you can pay money for anything you right know? and then the transition and then you know mm. you have my brother you know there was an argument and you know he said you know 
not all of us can always go after our dreams and at some point you know you just have to you know I think it's just time you know and this is around the time that I was like just on the radio like like maybe six months before mm-hmm. or so and or a year before and it's like what do you mean like I'm already making leaps and bounds like what are you talking mm-hmm. about like why would you even say that to me or you know another family member not family member but close to my family um, saying to me, you know, Danielle, you should just wake up and just think you're never going to make it. And I'm like, those are the cruelest words anyone can ever yes. say to somebody. And that's mm-hmm. something deep within them that they are just so heartbroken and miserable that they, they just a, want a lot of you them, to feel. A lot of them is like, it comes probably from a good place. But since they didn't make it and they failed, they scared that everybody else is not going to make it and fail. Instead of pushing them and saying, hey, listen, you're doing this and I did it and I failed. So change this. So instead of giving you advice how to change things, they don't do it. Yeah, it was more in the context of um, I know better mm-hmm. how you should make moves and what you should be doing versus then, you know, how you're going about it Mm -hmm. you know and the life and struggle of an artist you know you hear crazy stories of actors you know waitressing and Mm -hmm. you know doing all that and living in their cars and this and that and you know that was their struggle mine was living in a toxic environment Mm -hmm. that was my form of poison that was my form of um my my battle that i was willing to stay in to get to where I needed to get to because it was not only easier, but it was also um, the only way I saw how. Mm. Where other people are, you know, I'd rather sleep in my car for a few years than Mm -hmm. pay for an apartment because I'd rather spend the money to make sure my acting skills are are on point. Yeah, the sacrifice. And then a lot of people would not do that sacrifice. You know, like, why are you spending your time in your car? You know you could have asked for money and this and that. Like, you could have no. stayed with me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're going through that. But, uh, you know, we're going to take another, uh, the last commercial break, and then we're going to get into when you really started uh, getting noticed out there. So, again, this is Behind the Mic, and we'll be right back. The music you want to hear. You're listening to New York City's LDM Radio. Welcome back to Behind the Mic. And again, we're sitting with Daniel Black, an award winner, may I say. And now we're getting towards your music. When your music started going uh, great, uh, you actually put it on our station, our radio station, uh, became a nominee. Um, First of all, uh, how did I would love to hear how did you hear about the radio station first um because i don't even remember i know i got the email and we put it up that's all we remember um i was working with um a pr oh i'm forgetting her name right now <laughs> um but i had a pr someone that i was working with and she's the one who connected oh, us okay. and got me on uh to connect with you and and submit my music mm. and i completely forgot about it and then you guys reached out and mm. then it, it went from there. Yeah. What, one, well, one of the songs, um, Finish, right? Um, that one, I, I, I was a little upset about it because we, we, I was going to grab it for my show, but the one show grabbed it for theirs, which is a female show. Yeah, yeah. And it was just a perfect timing because they were going through some stuff and they had the naysayers, or, you can't do this. And so that song came out and she was like, wait, you thought I was finished? That's a good um, title, and and I played it for them yeah. just for because they didn't have a theme song. So I was like, "Hey, listen to this song." Oh my god, that is great! And they loved it, and to this day, they you know they play a, a little uh, piece of it in their intro so they can say and they tell people you know so it's never it never finished until you want it to be finished. So yeah. um, which is good, and uh, you know we put it up, and my thought was okay, a female rapper. Um, let me put it, because I don't see the faces um, in the beginning until they reach like top 10s and top 20s, and then we have to put a photo up. So then I was like, wait a minute, this is not the girl. And, and I was talk, you know, <laughs> talking to I'm my saying. staff. 
I'm like, I think y'all gave me the wrong picture. Y'all gave me a model, um, and we're looking at a rapper. And they was like, no, that's her. I was like, look at her page. And we all looked at the page, and we were like, oh, my God. Okay, that's her. That is you so, know. I did not know that. I did yeah, not know that. Yeah, it was so funny because, uh, like I said, we, we won't see the face until it, it reaches a, a certain point where we have to promote them. You know, because we don't promote if you're down like 60, 70 on the charts, right, you know, but right. if you're top tens, we have to promote you even more. Um, so when we start promoting, we have to put, we put flyers and we put all this other stuff up. And then that's when we were like, it's not matching. Yeah. And believe it or not, many people on the radio type, oh, who's this? Go to the website and see. And we had a couple people. We look, but I think the picture's wrong. Everyone saw No way. Because that it is doesn't so funny. it didn't match. And then when they look at your website and all that and your Instagram, then they was like, Wow, this person is really, you know, down to earth um yeah. type of thing. And I guess that's what confused them. A down to earth person singing rap and their demeanor changes, their whole attitude changes, and I was like, I guess that's just the music. You yeah. know? The yeah. same thing with the uh, music awards. Everybody, yeah. you know, and like, what? what? What's going on? <laughs> right. It's kind of like a shocking moment, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I do it to myself. I'm like, I just did that. Yeah. It's uh. Yeah, we, we send you the uh, the flyer saying you're a nominee. Um, how did that, you know, feel? Wild, wild. Because um, at the time that that was happening, um, I was not in a good place. And it was a lot of chaos, a lot of toxicity, um, a lot of pain, a lot of hurt um, that you would, no one would ever know that I was struggling with, that we're going through. I mean, when I came here to do the interview, I just came from um, a horrible situation. Right. And, and I was here to do what I needed to do, yeah. and that's it. Um, but... I, when I heard it, it was more of like validation for the strength that mm. I've had. It was an award that I won, not for my music, but for the strength of not giving up. Oh. It was like another little piece to say, keep going. Another mm. little piece to say, I see you. Mm. And so to me, that was validating that was what i received the award for strength which is good uh love hearing stuff like that because each person that won the award when i asked them they similar to wow this really put the nail in the coffin and i was gonna about to quit and i kept on going so which was good um to to do that and we you know we keep striving to get better and better and um with the artists and stuff like that so you you had two nominations right mm -hmm. two in a row so you're a two-time nominee a one-time award winner and first female hip-hop winner oh that so was that, a that's blessing that's another nail nail in the coffin there yeah. too so it's uh you know back after back there's things going um towards you like you said it's a validation of your struggle um so when you won that award um, the nomination nomination first. Um, did you tell anyone, and how did they they take it? You know. Oh, everybody was super excited. Um, but you know, it's always crickets. You know, at at certain times, times. too. It's you know, um, you post things, and it's like, well, why didn't they share it, or why didn't mm. you know, um, like they would in the beginning, you know. Right. Um, so now I don't focus on any of that anymore. It's more of like, I have people that I don't even know sharing my stuff. Mm -hmm. So that to me means more than anything. I'm just like, well, they're just my friends, you know, family and they have their own lives and it is what it is. It's never gonna change, it's always gonna be like that. But right, right. people were excited for me because so many of them did vote. Mm -hmm. And so it was validating that they would, you know, go out there and, you know, make that vote and, and do all that and, you know, show that support. Um, but yeah, it was it was amazing. It was more crazy when I won it and I was on my friend's porch. And she was like, she's like, 
when is this award thing on? Isn't it supposed to be on tonight? And I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm trying to connect to your Wi-Fi and I can't connect to him. Like we're sitting on the porch and she's drinking a glass of wine and we just got back from a long day and we turn it on and then we're watching it and then, you know, we're just Andrew like looking Fifth at each other. Andrew Fifth Award like, winner for the hip hop category like, goes to. I don't to know. I don't think so. This, <laughs> I really don't think so. Like, thank you, but I just don't know. I just know. And Daniel then you Black, guys said my name finished. and the surge of energy we literally like i i felt like a, a, a ping pong ball like i was like it, sitting in the seat and all of a sudden i was up in the air and like we're, we were both in the air it was like at the same time we just jumped and like i dropped my phone and we're screaming and it's literally so like eight nine o'clock at night like people are like sitting on their so, couch and like we're yeah, outside screaming and people probably thought we were crazy but we were crying and screaming and then we were like get more wine and mm. like then it was over from there oh my god yeah it's just again like you said when people say you can't do we did the first award why are you doing awards for an independent artist nobody knows them anyway i was like that's the whole purpose well, of it, doing it that's the point yeah so to people to get to notice them right um we play like they hire us to do music outside for the businesses and all that and in our contract we state we are going to play independent music artist songs as well, mm -hmm. not just mainstream. Right. So we let them know that. Parties, we're going to play. So they was like, oh, it's never going to work. No independent artist is going to give you their music anyway for free, and you're going to play it. I'm like, well, we're not winning money. They're not getting money, but we're all getting noticed. Right. Seven right. years later, you know. There you go. We, we're doing it. So Plenty and the more they tell me no. music is awesome. All someone has to do is Shazam and just be like, hey. Yeah. Who's this? And we have many people that we play their music, like, who's, who's singing that? Or they'll dance to it, or they, and they don't even know who they is even it. Know. Yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, snap, who's this? And, you know, we'll tell them, hey, it's on the radio exactly. station. So half of your votes as well came from people voting on the radio, or they'll text us on the radio and say, I want to hear this song, or I want to dedicate this one, I'm this one, and that's a point, that's a point, you know? It, so, it just fills my heart to, like, hear that, that people, you know, chose me. Right. You know. And, which is a good thing. Like I said, they half of the people on the radio would choose the person for their song because they don't see them. So now you, it's like the voice. You don't see them. So you have to it's pick, so amazing. You know, pick yeah. them for their voice or right. their lyrics or whatever um, uh, above it versus your friends just voting for you because they're friends. So, yeah. you know, and then you know, you'd be like, oh, I got three votes last time. And then all of a sudden you're a nominee and then sh it shoots up. Right. So, yeah. which is good. Um, we're running out of time, but where where are you going to be going from here? Like, what is your next steps? Uh, you know, I have a lot of things going on. Today is actually the release of a um, reality show that I'm on. Oh, it's okay. a reality entrepreneur uh, show. Wes Bergman from MTV mm. um, created this show, The Blocks, mm. and. Um, I'm on it with, you know, talking about my new company and there's, you know, a whole bunch of us, um, 65 of us were chosen out of tens of thousands. Oh, wow. Um, so it's going to be uh, a wonderful little ride here. So I just released, re-released my company, Musical Chefy. I have a sauce that's going to be on the shelf soon. Oh. Um, and it's all about hip hop recipes and rhyming and all of that. And I have more things to come in the near future with that so catch me on TikTok and all of my social media platforms with that in my uh rapping music video <laughs> and um I, see that. Yeah, I have sure. a new album coming out i have a new single love me like coming out um and i have a halloween show on the 28th friday mm. in tarrytown at hudson anchor so we'll love everyone to uh come through and reserve your table it's going to be fun hey, you had a uh from a hard journey to everything that you just said that is beautiful i hope you just keep going like especially with the music like we need some more you know more music oh yeah it's been way too long i've never <laughs> gone this long without releasing music before so there we yeah. go but ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoy behind the mic with daniel black um keep watching more behind the mics where we be bringing people in um talking to them not only artists but everyone else that uh is doing things behind the uh, scenery so I'm Charles Aloma. I hope you had a good time and we'll see you next week. <laughs>